Chapter 32, The Man Who Causes a Ruckus at the University Part 1 Translator's Note, Mio is back. The Lady Who Saved Yukito on the Subway Die, you Parisian! Said Yuki. Translator's Note, the term Parisi refers to people who like to get together at seasonal events such as Halloween and Christmas, as well as at clubs and music festivals where many people gather to have fun together. It can also be used to mean simply playing with friends, making a lot of noise, or someone who is in a good mood. It can also be used as a verb, as in to be Parisian. I clenched my fist, saying something like that, I'm at a university right now. If I'm going to participate in Halloween in Shibuya. So I've become a university student, yet I'm still in my first year of high school. So I'm not a university student, am I? I went home, changed my clothes, and headed for the designated place at the university. It was my first time there, so at least show me around. The campus is too big for me. Ah, Yukito. This way. Said Mio. Ninomiya-san? It's been a while. Said Yuki. I found the person I was looking for quite easily. It was Mio Ninomiya. She is the messiah who saved me from being falsely accused of molestation. If it hadn't been for you, I would have been in a lot of trouble, as well as Kido and the others. Since then, we've been keeping in touch every once in a while, and I got a call from Ninomiya-san asking me to come over after school. We've had some small exchanges in the past, but this time she asked me to do something for her. As a high school student, there was only so much I could do, but... You can call me Mio. It's just you and me, right? Said Mio. What kind of relationship do you think we have? Said Yuki. Master and slave? Said Mio. Slavery has returned to modern Japan. Said Yuki. I'm kidding though. Aren't we lovers? Said Mio. What dash? Said Yuki. I've never had a girlfriend in my life. And she is a college girl. Unlike the girls in my grade, she was more mature in fashion and makeup. When I look at it this way, I realize that there is a difference between college students and high school students. Needless to say, I didn't think she would be a good match for me. Thank you for coming today. Actually, I have a favor to ask. Said Mio. Will you be my boyfriend? Said Mio. The story goes like this. It seems that Mio-san was invited to a party today. According to Mio, she didn't want to participate because she wasn't interested in the party, but her friend begged her to come to the party to make up the numbers, so she decided to attend. She said that the party was with a basketball club, but the truth is that it's a common type of party. As you can see, there was no room for me to get involved. It's not like I had anything to do with it. For me, it was a sign of unexpected trouble. I'm not sure why a high school student like me would be invited to this party. But it's a mixer? I'd get really drunk, then someone would carry me to their place, and a video of me making a higo doing peace signs would be sent to Yukito Kuen. Is this okay with it? Said Mio. What are you talking about? Said Yuki. I'd say things like Yukito Kuen, you can't satisfy me anymore? Said Mio. Mio, you've been watching too many weird videos. Said Yuki and I was threatened on the basis of that, and one day, I'll conceive a child by a man I don't know. Said Mio. Crap. You're a completely uncommunicative species. Were you always like this? Said Yuki. So, Yukito, you're going to help me, right? Said Mio. No. Said Yuki. Do you want to see me end up with nipple rings? Said Mio. College students are amazing, in terms of making things up in their mind sort of way. Said Yuki. You don't like it, do you? Said Mio. 
Is this what they call a one-way communication? Said Yuki. You don't like it, do you? Said Mio. No. Said Yuki. I could only shake my head. In short, she was avoiding guys. She wants me to act as her temporary boyfriend during the party, but that doesn't mean I don't have any questions about it. Why me? Isn't a high school student a bit strange? Said Yuki. Because you're the only one who I can ask to do this. I don't know many men, and moreover, the content is so specific that it can only be done by someone you trust. Said Mio. But if you bring your boyfriend to a party, is it really a mixer? Said Yuki. I told her I wouldn't go otherwise. That's fine. Let's just make out on our own, okay? Said Mio. We don't have that kind of relationship though. Said Yuki. It's fine because we're lovers. Said Mio. It seems that before I knew it, Mio's trust in me had increased. It's a strange thing. I don't know, I've never been to one before, but isn't a blind date an event to get a boyfriend or girlfriend? I feel uncomfortable about participating in a mixer as a boyfriend, but if Mio and the other members are okay with it, then so be it. I also don't want to see Mio regretting afterwards if it turns out like that. I owe her for saving my life, so I'll cooperate here. I understand. I'll do it. Said Yuki. I wanted to hear those words. Said Mio. We headed for our destination, exchanging a few words in the style of a mysterious doctor. Tristi Hai Tora Shirand POV. I don't have time for this. Said Tristi. I, Tristi Hai Tora Shiran, was depressed. I wrapped my pink gold hair around my fingers. It's a habit I've had for a long time when I'm deep in thought. I think I have a cheerful personality, if I do say so myself. I've never been so depressed in my life. The reason for this is me. A while ago, I had an accident. A bicycle accident. I was a little too confident. A lack of awareness of reality. The gross negligence that those things overtook. I was riding my bike with my headphones on. That in itself is a problem, but then my phone rang. I thought to myself, I'll just check who it is, and if I need to answer, I'll just stop the bike and answer. So I picked up my phone while still on the bike. A trivial carelessness. That's what led to the accident. The moment I took my eyes off my phone to check it for a moment, I bumped into him. The person I bumped into was a high school boy. I felt a shock as if I had hit something very hard, but the other boy was blown away by the force of the collision. I turned completely pale. A nearby person immediately rushed to the boy and called 110. I hurriedly got off my bike and went to the boy's side. Fortunately, there were no noticeable external injuries, but I couldn't rest at ease. In the past, there have been cases of people who were hit by bicycles and suffered brain damage, only to die a few days later. If a person's head is hit hard by the impact of the collision, it doesn't matter if there is trauma or not. Oh my god! What have I done? I've never felt such fear before. I might have robbed the future of a completely innocent boy in front of me. I would be arrested as a criminal myself. I would have betrayed my parents and made them sad. It was the boy in front of me who was having the hardest time, but I felt angry and sad at myself for being so self-protective. Tears spilled over my eyes. All I could do was hope that the boy would be okay. As it turned out, a settlement was reached. The other party had no noticeable injuries, and the results of a thorough examination showed no abnormalities. My mom, dad, and I desperately apologized to him. By that time, I was ready for a lawsuit. Even though there were no serious injuries, what I had done was socially unacceptable. I caused the accident while wearing headphones and holding my phone in my hand. 
It was unacceptable. However, the boy forgave me. The lawsuit was avoided and the settlement was decided through our discussion. I was prepared to pay a lot of money, but the boy didn't want that either. On the contrary, he said, I'm used to it, so please don't worry about it, as if he was concerned about us who were on our way to apologize. The kindness of the boy made my heart ache even more. I couldn't forgive myself for hurting such a boy. Since then, I've been living my life as usual. But it never made me feel better. I can't help but think of that boy's face. I guess the person who is responsible for the accident will be tormented by a sense of guilt for the rest of their life. If I had not hit the right spot at that moment, I would not be here now. I was depressed, but my friend invited me to a party. I don't really like that kind of thing and have always refused to participate. I've always been good-looking, partly because I'm half-Japanese. Perhaps because of this, there were many men who confessed to me that they were only looking for my body, and I always felt those stares piercing me even in the university. I thought about saying no this time as well, but since she was trying to encourage me, I didn't want to ignore her. But how could I enjoy it when I had made my parents worry, and more importantly, had put the boy through such an experience? My depression still lingering, and I headed off to my destination, trudging along. Sorry, I'm late. Said Tristy. All the members were there except for me. They were already having a good time. I could see the tension in the men's eyes rise at the sight of me. Disgusted stares licked my chest and legs. I'm so glad you're here, Tristy. Said. What do you want to drink, Tristy? Said. He kept offering me alcohol at every turn. 